My name is uh, Alex Liu and I'm a consultant uh, a general and colorectal surgeon. Uh, I've been practicing for the last uh, 16 years and uh, I have subspecialties in benign uh, colorectal diseases and uh, pelvic floor conditions. And I've been working here for the last, at One Welbeck Digestive Health for the last two years. Uh, bowel incontinence uh, is the lack of control of bowel and uh, this may result in uh, either urgency or soiling. Uh, it is also known as a fecal incontinence and is relatively common. Uh, in fact, uh, we can find it in about 10% of the population. It is more common uh, in uh, elderly women, especially for those uh, who had uh, childbirth in the background. Uh, symptoms may range uh, widely. Uh, fecal incontinence most common symptoms are um, soiling, or urgency, and uh, with urgency we mean the urge without control. Most of the times, actually, we have uh, patients who come with a mixed type of fecal incontinence, so when those both soiling and, fecal in and urgency are present. Uh, it is not uncommon to see uh, patients uh, depriving of uh, social life or staying isolated at term for fear of uh, those symptoms happening in the, during their social life. So they reduce quite significantly uh, their daily activities. Other symptoms may include uh, either diarrhea or constipation. There are several uh, possible causes for uh, bowel incontinence. Uh, there are certain conditions such as inflammatory bowel diseases or IBS. Uh, severe, ongoing, and long-standing diarrhea or constipation. Uh, sometimes bowel incontinence can be uh, present only on uh, women who basically present with weakness of the pelvic floor muscles. More commonly, bowel incontinence is present when uh, women had a childbirth in the, in, in the past, and this because it could be related to damages either to the nerves or to the muscle or the sphincter complex down in the uh, pelvis. A consultation with an expert on this field usually is more than enough. Uh, consultations uh, might go through the background and uh, especially uh, taking notes of all the current symptoms. Uh, sometimes uh, consultations uh, need to, need, needs to have uh, uh, some sort of examination, so patients might have a, a proper examination in the pelvic area or on the bottom side uh, area. Uh, most of the time we use uh, small uh, cameras or probes to better check uh, inside the anus and making sure uh, that there is nothing that is causing mechanically and physically uh, the incontinence and all the symptoms that a patient come with. Um, there are some other investigations which are more relevant for fecal incontinence and these usually are anorectal physiology tests. These include anorectal manometry and endoid ultrasound scan. Just to test that basically uh, look at the function and the, uh, at the anatomy of the sphincter uh, muscles. Uh, some of the tests may be even uh, colonoscopy or MRI um, investigations, and uh, we usually run these tests quite routinely here at One Wellbeck Digestive Health. Usually, conservative treatments are more than enough uh, uh, as a treatment for bowel incontinence. Uh, those conservative measures may include uh, uh, continence uh, devices or um, tools that may help uh, in containing those symptoms. Uh, when I say uh, tools, I mean like uh, pads or uh, inserts or plugs that may help uh, containing uh, this uh, huge spectrum of uh, uh, symptoms that a patient may present with. Uh, sometimes we may ask to make some uh, changes in the diet. Okay. Uh, some other times we uh, target uh, uh, conservative uh, treatments, including uh, uh, pelvic floor exercises, or a treatment with our specialized corrective physiotherapist and uh, biofeedback uh, nurses. Uh, other conservative treatments sometimes include the trials of uh, medications who might help uh, improving uh, uh, those conditions. A surgery may be uh, considered sometimes as a form of a treatment for patients uh, who suffer from uh, fecal incontinence. Uh, surgery may vary. Uh, it could be uh, a sphincter muscle uh, reconstruction. 
uh, or it could be a more specific uh, forms of neuromodulation, like sacral nerve neuromodulation. This is a, a sort of a pacemaker, but uh, it targets the sphincter muscles, it reduces the soiling and uh, the urgency. Another treatment which is available are bulking agents, which is a sort of a nail sphincters, which again it gives more strengthness on the pelvic floor muscles and they may reduce all of those incontinence symptoms. It is fully curable in uh, um, some cases, but I must admit that most of the patients uh, we can actually uh, attempt to reduce the symptoms and to improve the quality of life at our best. The aim here remains always to get uh, a proper fully cure from the problem and when we cannot try to get an excellent quality of life for our patients. We can somehow uh, reduce uh, the symptoms of bowel incontinence uh, simply making uh, more dietary changes and we can also uh, prevent or reducing uh, those symptoms uh, starting already at home some pelvic floor exercises so squeezing the muscles or, or, or the anus under the pelvic floor and this with the aim to increase the strengthness of those muscles and therefore reducing the symptoms. My advice is that if you have any of those symptoms or you're experiencing any soiling or urgency and then this reduces your quality of life and your daily activity, uh, go to your GP, ask for help, uh, ask your GP to refer you to a specialist in this field, and sometimes a simple consultation, a few investigations, and a few tips and tricks given by a specialist in this sector might help you significantly to get better, to get on track.